Hello everybody, this is Fear My Game, so with the next part of my Total War Warhammer 2 play through as the Clan Anger and Campaign. We left off last episode with the Rebellion in the North trying to take Karak Ungor from us. It's a very small garrison, but the enemy is also noticeably weak, so hopefully we can fight this out manually. There's a chance we could auto resolve this, but I'd rather fight it out their own strength and see if we can win. I think we can. So hopefully, I, hopefully what I think is actually what it is. <laughs> we don't have a particularly large army is my main concern here. Pro what I'll need to do is I'll have to have make sure I protect my range units. So this, ooh, this map's a little, it is quite interesting looking. So, what? I wonder what that outsider is. That like tunnels? This is like entirely underground. I'm gonna, what is what is that thing on the map? Like apparently, there's different like like bridges in the like different choke points. They're attacking technically the most open area. Good on them, but sad for me. <laughs> well, that's assuming the bridges are actually passable. I'm not, even, I'm not sure they are. But it does look like they're going to attack the gates. I don't... Let's see. I don't think holding the walls is actually a good idea. Mm, I'm trying to think for a moment. Sorry. <laughs> if I try holding the walls, there will be a nice you know, default choke point with the walls by having my troops on them. But my, my rangements would not be as effective as they otherwise could be if they if I fought on the walls. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fight within range of the walls. So that way my units can fire up on the walls as they're coming through. So let's see how I can potentially make that work. Thunders. I agree. Let the vengeance begin. So how it is? I'm gonna have one unit. Of my dwarf warrior unit be on the middle here. This miner on the flank. The big advantage that the enemy has right now is that they will not rout. So they will cause problems even as they die. It looks like the Hellbats are, are actually coming forward first. If that if the Hellbats are actually dead before the battle starts, that'll actually be really good for me. Because they can potentially be a problem when it comes to dealing with my, with attacking my range units. So with this, there'll be a section of their army that's gone. Stop firing, stop firing. The reason why I told this stuff fire is because I'm pretty sure they were wounding my troops a little bit more than the Hellbats were wounding my troops. So just to be on the safe side, I told them to stop firing. It does look like they are now crumbling. Which means they basically shattered. Or maybe bro actually broken is probably more accurate because they technically have disintegrating, which is a bit more accurate than shatter, which is a bit more. Which means they're just gonna be gone faster. But usually disintegrating doesn't happen until, unless it's like the end of the battle, everything's routed and broken and dead on their side.
Man, the Hellbats are doing what I felt what I was worried they were going to do. They're actually making it so my range units aren't being as effective as they could be at firing at the enemy on the walls. Even though they're not doing a lot of damage, it's enough damage that's going to be moderately inconvenient, at least. So it does look like I need to angle this Thunderer a little bit. If he's for him to be useful. I'm, no, why are you advancing, you m mentally deficient dwarfs? I'm going to reposition these guys a little bit more. To try and get a nice angle off with them. Yeah, critical binding and crumbling. So that's good so far. There, now that's a pretty good angle there for the dwarf or for firing into their sides. Now we got crumbling and crumbling. No, damn. The Thunderers don't really have a good vertical aim, so they're not able to fire up on top of the walls, unfortunately. I think I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna reposition my Thunderers. My preference would actually be to try pull back my at my my general uh, unit and then swap in his place the actually non-general unit. That way, my, that way I don't risk the morale penalty from losing my general. Hear that? Slay all the necromancers and vampires. What about the zombies, though? We should probably kill them to slay them, too, right? I mean, it's only all... If you're being honest. I'm gonna reposition my thunders a little bit to try and see if I can't get them a decent angle if I actually fire without killing troops, our own troops, I should say. So far we're holding, but we're starting to run low on ammunition on our quarrelers. Yeah, this thunder, I think, hopefully should have better, better line of fire than he did before. Hmm, maybe not. What if I move them back a little bit, like this? Another critical binding, crumbling. Looks like that one is critical binding as well. Now the zombies are coming on. I, th I think zombies might be a little stronger than the skeletons, I think. No, they're weaker, never mind. There we go, now we got the right angle for him. There we go. Now we got the angle that they can fire at. Why are they they're moving actually kind of strangely, but I'm gonna try and follow them back actually and trade them out with the miners so they can rest Now these miners which are now fresh are now able to join the battle and put through a little bit more impacts
I feel like this fight would be a little harder if they actually engage with all their troops right off the bat, but for some reason the AI is sending them in waves. It's like, okay, wave one, done! Send in wave two! <laughs> and then wave three! Mate, let's just keep sending in the same amount of troops. Why are these troops advanced charging? I didn't tell them to charge. What's going on here? I guess because there's like a couple of random skeletal spearmen over here, they decide they're engaged in combat so they charged, I guess, is what happened there. Even though they're in guard mode, which means they shouldn't do this behavior, but they are for some reason. Now this guy doesn't have a good angle, so I'm not worried about him firing. So my coilers are officially out of ammunition. I'm not gonna lie, part of me is kind of worried whether or not my thunders are actually hurting my troops more than they, my enemy is. Cause I see that I see every volley. I see my the health going down. And I'm like, is that because of me or because of the enemy? A little bit awkward. <laughs> Dwarf warriors, you're under attack over here. You men's lightweights. Jesus. Let's get involved in this battle over here. Squish them! Squish them all! Alright, looks like there's one zombie left, one other zombie, and looks like they've engaged their general now, it looks like. These guys apparently have a buff on them, and oh, they're getting healed by the invocation of Nahak. At least they were. There's a lot of skeleton warriors and not a whole lot of dwarf warriors left. I'm actually gonna hold fire on my thunderer, on this thunderer unit for now. And I'm going to save its ammunition until I see where the general enemy general is going to be and try to make use of him. Make use of them to defeat the general. There we go. Right, let's concentrate missile fire on the general without the necromancer. They can't possibly win this battle. But, well, it's not an orc, so I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. There we go. Perfect. The general has been defeated. Now, now they're disintegrating. Perfect. We have held the line, man. We have held the line. The singles hold in battle. Three hundred kills, almost three hundred kills, but both by quarrelers. Thunder did a pretty decent job, and the units held. They had a lot of units, but not, they not but none of them were actually good units. So my dwarf warriors are not like the basic dwarf infantry are not that bad of units. <laughs> so when you throw complete trash at them, they're able to hold pretty well, especially with really good missile support. Even though I feel like the missile support may have been hurting a little bit too. <laughs> but they seem to have done more damage to the enemy than to us. 
It looks like. Let's see, 14, 15, 19, 30, 30, uh, 41, 43. I, I want to see how if I maybe kill my own troops by just counting how many kills they have and be like, oh, okay, we killed a lot of ourselves, kind of thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, let me, let me do it real fast. So 14, 15, 19, 30, 41, 43, uh, 57, 87, 101, 113, uh, 121, uh, 128. So yeah, we killed about 30, 40 of our own troops with missile fire. Oops. <laughs> oh, rebellion's been put down. Be gone, thoughts. I'm about to miss this message from somebody. What's going on? Okay, good. I just want to make sure it wasn't like an emergency or anything like that. Alright. But we're having a basically a bit more our problem as it stands right now. We have lost multiple settlements here in the re, in this recent battle, in this recent fight the Greeks. We lost, unfortunately, Zeroxil. I was hoping that the enforce that the defenses I had made would be enough, but the wog was just too great. Zeroxil was lost. But we are going on the offensive in the west. We are going to take. Zvorak for ourselves. First, I'm just going to circle, however, I'm not going to attack quite yet. We lost Zerak Zil, losing our commandment and some money from that respect. We have lo we lost Karak Drawn to a rebellion. Grimgor Ironhide is moving up north here. We have Dwarzag the Great Green Prophet also on the move. We have Grimble the White Dwarf here. Currently, in the middle of green skin territory, not the best place to be in. I admit, there is now an army in the uh, near the the Karag Agril, which means this whole this whole settlement chain will probably be taken out. We have Zifbar under siege from a rebel army, which hopefully she'll be defeated. But it is a bit better than the other rebel army, so we will find out exactly how that goes down. I was unfortunately too late in getting Ungrim Iron Fist back to Zuffbar. So as you can see, the situation is a little grim right now. We're also going to move to attack Karag Duran. I'm just I'm gonna circle here real fast. We're gonna do what time is it? Alright, we're gonna do the big we're gonna do the big battle over here first in in Zavarok. So we will have some initial losses, I imagine, but once we take out a few of the Greenskin armies, I think we'll be in a bit of a better spot. But as it stands right now, we got a lot of territory to defend, and a lot of enemy armies, and not a whole lot of armies ourselves. We have about three armies. Our, bit, our army from that we moved from the west to east initially to try and fight the Greens, try and like, get involved in such, and stuff. Ended up getting, uh, is, in a, is pretty wounded after its last battle. It's a very tough one. It might be able to, at, like, it has fought multiple battles are so far. <laughs> so it's like, starting to look a little bit ragged. Grimgore the White Dwarf has had to fight any serious competition so far. So he's been doing fine. This is this guy's first battle with me. So we shall see how well he does. This is actually a pretty cool looking location. So those aren't walls, so those are just things we can pass through. So anyway, that's a wall though. That's not. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, like there's kind of like I, this is a cool this must be one of the modded maps, I I'm guessing. Ooh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Not nah, kinda lie. So we'll probably just go this way through this choke point. Though I'd actually rather have the enemy. I'd rather prefer if the enemy attacked me instead of me attacking them, but you know, you can't always get what you want in battle. So what we're gonna try and do... We have our long beards. Let's see. 
I'm, I'm gonna make the long beard like line maybe this tall. Hmm. I think probably about two long beards across that opening, I think. Maybe something around there. Let's see, I'm gonna... I know that's assuming that this, but all of this is an opening. There could be not actually an opening there. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna say about that wide. So let's do about that wide. about that wide. I'm hoping that should make it so like they can fit a block off all three of the entrances. And just so, as we move up. And then we'll have everything else kind of like lined up nicely behind them as they advance. I'm actually gonna move the garage doors back for now. I'm gonna move them up a little bit again later. Move these guys out of the way as well for now. That way I don't accidentally click and drag them when I didn't mean to kind of a situation. Grudges. Kazuki, Kazukai, Kazumi. Ah, there we go. And then we have these guys in the center here. I'll probably move, and then we'll move these guys back into position. Move these guys. We'll have these guys into their own little formation there. Probably put these guys into a group too. I'll probably have these guys advance with their first group. Just to make sure it's a nice strong front. How far does the grudge throw fire? Oh, they can actually hit inside the walls according to this. Wait, are they actually coming outside of the walls? Is that what's going on? It looks like they're just getting into position. They're not actually leaving the walls. So can I fire? Oh, they have to move up a little bit, apparently. Okay. Let's move them to about here and see what happens. Let's move these guys up, too. I like this layers at the walk because they're faster than all the other dwarfs. Because all the other dwarfs are wearing super heavy armor. Giant Slayers. So we... mm. There's actually enemies sitting out here, so I have to keep an eye on that. It looks like the Grudge are in position to start shelling their pos the enemy position. I wonder if this terrain falls apart if hit, or if it's actually just invulnerable and blocking all my shots. That's what I'm kind of curious about. But either way, no reason to not have our grudge throwers try and soften up the enemy before we attack. Time is on our side, to an extent. Yeah, we already take out basically two and a half units, maybe even th a third one. There's one Dagon. Broken, not shattered, so they will come back eventually, most likely. Yeah, grudge throwers are just, this is free damage. Tr our troops aren't getting wounded, but the enemy is. So there's no reason not to take it as much advantage of it as we can. They got, do got some of those uh, snarling pump wagons, which I thought would not be very strong, but every time I fought them, I'm amazed at actually how strong they are. Maybe I just don't have the proper tools for dealing with them efficiently. 
I'm gonna change the position of my grudge throws real fast, just so that way they can have even better firing positions. It knows. We're gonna be nice and methodical about this battle. There we go. They're in, they're in position and firing again. I wanted to make sure they had a better like line of fire for what they're doing. And I could also reposition the one on the right flank to start firing over at those guys there too. Once they're once they're done clearing up the section. Yep, there's a savage orc biggins gone. I think those guys are armor piercing. So no, or are they just good against large. I forget. But either way, they're not there anymore. Orc boys gone. Basically deleted. I've even got some of these Savage Orc big bull biggins. Yeah, these guys are armor piercing, so if I can get these guys with the artillery, that'd be super good. Um, anything that's armor piercing is going to be the biggest threat to my troops, which are almost all armored. Yes, I know. Oh, wait, you're going to be gone? I thought she said she was just going to say she like, put on her church stuff, but I guess she's going. I'll put it on anyways, just to be able to sleep, so... The Gabos! Alright. All of the ammunition, it looks like that's as much as firing as we're going to really get out of most of my grudge throw. So I think it's about time we start advancing on the enemy. Alright, so I'm going to just resume play and start moving in. Alright, so it looks like only two of these openings are actually passable, it would appear. Looks like their aim when it comes to these guys is pretty piss poor. There we go, now they're getting some good shots in. Let's start getting a uh, moving adva advance forward. Apparently, this is an opening. It just the game didn't think it was one. Slayers, we need your assistance. Yeah, they're getting some nice air fire in those pump wagons, making it so that as much of a threat as they otherwise could be. There's a health potion. How much health do you have maximum? Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Nice and easy. Now we got our giant slayers in the middle of this battle. They should start just eating up the enemy. Because most of this is cavalry. Just chopping through them. Giant Slayers, 49 kills, 11 kills already. Our Quarlers are actually getting some work done. I was not expecting them to get any work done in this fight, considering how the, the layout was. But they're actually doing a pretty good job. I'm going to start move advancing them forward to meet up with the rest of the troops. Especially as the area is now opening up for us.
Looks like sneaky. They got the buff put on them. Hold, Longbeards, hold! Bring the orcs down. Grudges. Keep up the fight. Let's try to help this front as much as we can. Lots of squish in the enemy. Finish that guy off real fast, please, and thank you. Alright, now let's start moving our guys up to start dealing with the end what the enemy has over here. I tried to fall back these long beards. A little bit and move this guy up. Good job, good job. Here, this part's just a knockdown drag out fight over here, which we should win like slowly but surely. Drain them. I have my coilers now focus firing on their lat goblin archers here, and I'm just going to start advancing on their position. Yeah, look at that just melt under a sustain out uh, of folk a concentrated fire of all my coilers in this army. And gone. Yeah, we're slowly but surely winning, but the sl emphasis on the slowly bit. And their general's about to be dead. Looks like they're finally moving these guys from this flank up to assist them on the, in the center. Let's get these long beards in position to try and hold the wall, hold the center area. There, it looks like they broke due to army losses. At least in that area. We have victory!
Garden Slayer's got a nice amount of kills. Help soften them up for when we advance. Long beach, like some of the Long Beach got a lot of kills, some of them were like a little bit of kills. I think it just depends on what part of the battle they were in that allowed them to get a lot of kills or not. But yeah, the general did a good job of like doing a lot of the image. Yeah, the thing did good work. I signed up basically wherever I felt like I needed the most amount of muscle and I uh, did what I needed him to do. Worked out quite nicely, I'd say. My own, my own, my main concern is that while I'm advancing here, I'm probably going to lose the most of my central province, which is going to be annoying to deal with, but there's nothing I can really do about it. Yeah, minor settlements with, uh, with some interesting design. Okay, so... Here. Oh, that's not bad, actually. I didn't know that was a thing. That's actually something I might start taking if that's a thing that everyone has. Might as well take, uh... And then start building them up there. Spelagar Iron Hammer, my main generalis. Let's go for Stand Your Ground as his bonus. That way he can start buffing people a little bit more. He had a nice hard fight. We lost one of our Thanes in the battle. He's wounded, but he'll be back in a few turns. I don't know exactly where he's going to come back. But he will be soon. I'm going to just get this Ancestral Grudge stuff. At first I was a little hesitant on doing that, but I'm like, you know, it looks like the Green Sins are going to be our... I expected the Green Sins to kind of be dead at this point, if I'm being entirely honest with you. The fact that they're actually going to be my big threat of the camp, threat of the campaign is actually surprising. I wonder if like they get a buff because I'm a dwarf or something like that. Uh, oh, there's tier three events. I'll still grudge. I'll take that. So I'd like to advance and take out this arm, finish off this army, but my main concern about doing that is the fact that this army is, is might be able to catch up to me. And I'd like to fall back and replenish my troops. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to fall back for now. Let's see, what can I recruit? I can get Iron Breakers. I thought this is something not bad to get. They'll be expensive as hell, hell to keep, but uh, you know they're a pretty nice unit to have. I think I'll just spam the this guy too. It'll make me have a lot. It'll, I'll still be losing money, but. Then you look, I should hopefully start making a little bit of money as time goes on. We'll get to that problem when we get to that problem. I, though there is one thing I technically can do. I can have my guys search ruins to try and make money. Though now I just revealed the Skaven so that I don't get money after I, from that deal at in the end. That's kind of unfortunate. Yes, it looks like there is a Skaven to my to the north to the northeast of me, which I will have to deal with as well, which will be a problem. So I won't be able to spam like destroy this settlement anymore because of the unfortunate nature that uh, I can't afford it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What's the commandment over here? I need. Okay, we can't do tainted public order anymore. We need money. So taxes. You all get more taxes. Thank you for giving me all your money. If I could take Carrick Asgar, that will actually be a pretty good increase in the amount of money that I can get per turn. That's already High King's Tribute. That one's already that too. Alright, looks like we're getting as most money into the situation as we're gonna get. 
This will take us three turns before this army is ready and we're ready to go for a fight. Alright, let's take Karak Drawn. I could auto-resolve it to save time, and it's, and it's about time where I need to end this episode anyway, so I guess I should auto-resolve it. Didn't lose too much, and not, not, not too surprising. Luna occupied for only 122 gold. That's probably not worth it. They are now we're back at the positives in terms of money-making opportunities. Grimbrold, the White Dwarf. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. Well, let's go for Lightning Strike. That way he can at least, um, that way, in the case there's a lot of armies nearby, which there, there's two dead full armies nearby, might be able to get the advantage there. All right, let's see. Uh, assassinate Specialist, Spread Public Order. The dwarfs need me. I agree. This is what I need to do is I need to take all of this area from them and push southeast into the Karakai Peaks. I wonder how far they've expanded southward. Or if they've just been focused on the north. So I'll take this army about three turns as well to be fully replenished. Four for fully replenished, but I'm gonna probably only go for about three turns. Because down at that point I'll be like good enough. Is there anyone I could trade with that I previously could not trade with before? No, it does not look like that. So, you won't be able to make any more money from trade, but... Oh well. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> that nice guy, a little... I, I, was, I felt the need to stretch. I won't be able to defend this fight at all, so I'm just going to have to auto-resolve it, sadly. I'm, I'm just going to have to lose those two settlements. And, and uh, that settlement, too, apparently. Until I can, um... Until I can get... Until I can grim roll the White Dwarf into position. We need to fight this battle out. Lightning Shark apparently would give me such a high light uh, auto-resolve factor? What is this? But I think I'm going to fight it out because it's a nice big battle. No reason not to. But I think I'm going to end this episode here. And we'll pick back up next part with... With the... I think part... This is part 15. So next one's part 16. Plan and we're on campaign. So probably what's going to happen is... For the, for the new future. Just a little update for anybody who's watching this part. Is... So we'll go to the police on this one. But... The re Rome One Remastered came out. I did pay, I did pick it up because like because it was a discount. And I do love Rome One. I did see some of the pre streams. And I'm not a big fan of the UI, but maybe I'll, maybe just because I'm used to the old one, I re I think the original UI is just much better. Uh, either way, but I wanted to give it a shot, and I think I might record myself doing some of that when it comes out. Um, and probably what I'll do is I'll have that come on Tuesdays at the same time as Clan Anger and Campaign, because I think out of all the campaigns I'm currently running, this one's probably going to finish first um so i might as well have that rome total war campaign come out the same day that way when this one ends i'll just transition over to just having that one uh and then having that one in, on tuesdays instead um so but by the time you guys watching this one i probably already released that first episode but just just in case you guys are curious feel free to check it out um total war warhammer 2 i'm probably getting more videos released soon enough um, I'm sorry. I was gonna say my brain just not working. Yet. I'll probably release. I'll probably. I'll probably release more another campaign when like Total Warhammer three comes out. Uh, for another Total War Warhammer campaign. I've been, I played a you know greens. I played this one and I played a couple other ones super recently. So I'm kind of like a little bit like I could play other games other than Warhammer right now. <laughs> But I'm going to keep this one going because I'm actually, I've got to get to see how well it goes and I want to see it to completion. Uh, but hopefully you guys have a good day and evening, wherever it may be. And if you guys like the video, reach food to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.